Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about some new products from Desert Tech. One of them is the MDRX Micron, which I'm holding here in my hands. This is a really neat new product from Desert Tech that we'll talk about, but we got another new product to show you guys as well. And we're just gonna talk about the MDR and the MDRX in general and do some shooting with it and share with you my thoughts on this bullpup now that I've been using it for quite a few years and on quite a few hunts. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you like our content, please take a moment just to click the like, share, and subscribe button. It really helps us out here at the channel. And we also look forward to reading your comments down below. We respond to comments when we can, and also it helps us with the algorithms. So with all that being said, let's get started with today's video. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. Here in front of me, I have my original 5.56 MDR, and this is the original configuration. This is before the X model. And on top of it, I have an EOTech red dot sight. And on the end here, this is from X2 Development. It's a flow-through can, very similar to OSS. And this one is the Orion. And we'll talk more about these silencers once it warms up just a little bit more. And we're going to put these on the meter and talk about them. I have them in, I have one in 5.56 and I have one in 308 or 30 cal as well. And so that's what this scuba cylinder is on the end of this 5.56 rifle. So I was, I was invited out many years ago to check out the then prototype MDR. And most of the guns, lower components, and anything that's polymer now was then 3D printed. I did a video way, way back talking about the development of this gun. And so when it came to market, like most brand new products, it had some teething pains. Now, I got really lucky because my first one was a flat dark earth rifle that was in originally in 308, and mine ran fine, but plenty of people had issues. So they made some updates to the guns, and they kept twisting my arm to send in my gun to have it updated, but I refused until I finally gave in because mine ran fine. But I sent it in for the updates and it came back and it again runs just fine. I also changed it to 6.5 Creedmoor, which was a cool thing that happened about a year ago. So the MDR is a bull pup that's American made and people ask me what I think of it as compared to the X95, the Steyr AUG, you know, other modern uh, bullpup rifles. And for the most part, I've said these make great hunting rifles. They make great home defense guns, things like that. But I didn't believe that they were military tough. And I've gone back and forth with Desert Tech on that. They keep asking me, why do I say that? And I talk about the forward ejection system, the problems that I've had with it in the past uh, and things like that. And even when I was looking at the prototype, I said, you might want to give up that scissoring system and the forward eject and just use a regular ejection out the right hand or left hand side of the gun, which we'll get to in a moment. But overall, when the final production guns came out, I've had very good luck with them, the 5.56 and now the 6.5 Creedmoor. And we'll talk a little bit more about the 6.5 Creedmoor because it also has a brand new product on it. But the MDR was, you know, pretty popular. People really started to like them. There were some really high profile videos out there showing, showing some serious problems with them. I think um, Grand Thumb did one and maybe in range TV. And then they also did a follow up video after the updates to fix the issues. But all products evolve. Anytime you buy a first generation anything, just accept the fact you're going to have problems, most likely. That's true of any gun, any gun manufacturer. There's always teething pains because no matter how much you test it at the factory, by the time it gets out into the hands of trigger pullers that you know abuse them, don't clean them, run them till they get super hot, all the stuff that we do, that's when things start to break and malfunction and that's how companies learn and then they evolve the product line. And that's how we got the MDR X. Now this is the Micron. So this is two new products of the three I want to show you. So the MDR X made uh, a number of improvements over the original MDR. They improved the polymer on the MDR X and 
I've never broken or chipped or had a problem with the original polymer, but they used a more durable polymer in the MDRX. You'll notice that we now have the option for side ejection, and this can be either right or left hand ejection. We still have full ambi controls. The selector lever is present on both sides of the firearm. Charging handle, just like the original, is present on both sides of the firearm. All the basic manual of arms where you can lock the bolt open manually, things like that. All that is carried over to the MDRX. They made some improvements to the gas system. The gas system now will function better in adverse situations, like if you throw it in water, which is what Grand Thumb did. Uh, he threw his MDR in, in water and it had some problems. So the, the MDRX has an updated gas system to deal with that issue. And you can see the gas system is exposed here on the Micron. And it is user adjustable with the tip of a bullet. They made some updates to the bolt and various other changes, including an improved trigger. Now, when they talk about the improved trigger, I don't really notice much difference between the trigger in this brand new Micron and my old original MDR, simply because I've shot that thing so much that trigger is like beautiful. But a brand new trigger is a little bit, you know, a little bit creepy and stagey, but once it breaks in, it's a great trigger. Right out of the box, the new MDRXs are gonna have a better trigger than the original MDR. So, that is what I want to talk about here really quick. I'm going to set the original MDR aside and let's talk about this Micron. So I've given you the updates on the MDR-X. The Micron is the latest and greatest in what they uh, have brought out. And at first, I'll be honest with you guys, I was, when I saw pictures of it and everything, I was like, cool, you know, they shortened the barrel to 11 and a half inches. The other rifle I showed you, the black rifle in 5.56 is a 16 inch barreled gun. I'm like, you know, neat. It's a 12 inch barreled gun. I have an X95 with a 13 inch barrel. That's, you know, an IDF type firearm. And I, I love shooting it. And I really saw no use for this. But once I got my hands on it and started shooting it and my friends started shooting it, and I've, I've had at least six or seven people shoot this thing now. And everybody says the same thing. It's amazing. But what makes it amazing? Well, there's several things that I really like about the gun. First of all, I'm glad that it has the side ejection. That's much more simple. It, it's uh, you know less prone to failure with you know rounds getting jammed up in the forward ejection chute. But with the original MDR, you could pop that side cover off and it would just eject out the side as well if you're having problems. But it um, it it's it's just the recoil impulse on this thing. Everything about it is just great. When you shoulder it, you'll, you'll notice the new front hand guard, which is kind of like a P90 style system where you have a hand stop because without the suppressor on here, that barrel is right there. So this is one thing you do want to be very careful with. If you have your hand out here, you get it in front. Now you're getting your hands dangerously close to that muzzle. So you want to make sure you use this hand stop and, and shoulder it. But when you shoulder it, it is all the weight literally is back here, which is the true benefit of one of the, you know, the bullpup design I've always touted, but it balances even better than my X95 or Tavor. It, it balances better. I could stand here and hold this rifle in the ready position forever with no fatigue. It's just great. And then the recoil impulse on this thing is minimal. Now they did come out with a muzzle device, which I've taken off, and it looks like a three-pronged flash suppressor, but there's much more going on to it if you look at the geometry of the cuts. And this is designed to be a flash suppressor and also uh, reduce muzzle climb for faster on-target shots, follow-up shots. This one's made for 223, but they make it for the other calibers as well. You can pick up the, the Micron kit, the 5.56 kit, and retrofit your existing MDR if you want to turn it into this. But keep in mind, this is an NFA item. So once you go shorter than 16 inches of barrel length, um, and an overall length, I think, uh, what is it, 29 inches or whatever. Once you get that short, then you have to file a $200 tax uh, and file a Form 1 to manufacture it, pay a $200 tax, I should say, before you can assemble it into what you see here. Uh, this one was, you know, ordered through copper as a factory SBR. So uh, this gun actually is copper's property. But the gun just is really, really nice, easy to use and the recoil impulse is minimal. Go ahead and lock this bolt open here. Weapon is unsafe. Go ahead and put my OSS can back on. Now with a, an 11 and a half inch barrel, it's a lot like 10 and a half inch barrels ARs, right? I don't care how good the silencer is, it's nowhere near hearing safe. It just takes the edge off that concussion. 
I do have, hiding around here somewhere, 10 rounds of Federal ammunition. This is their 223 American Eagle line. Uh, it's 55 grain ball. And I want to thank our friends over at Federal for supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel. They do that by supplying us with free ammunition so we can continue to bring you content. However, they're tight on ammo, we're tight on ammo, so instead of doing 20 or 30 round mags, we're only doing 10 rounds per magazine to conserve ammo until we can get through this crisis of, of shortage of everything from guns, ammo, to you know any accessory you can think of. So let's do a little bit of shooting here with the Micron and show you guys what I'm talking about in terms of recoil impulse. Now I have the bolt locked to the rear manually. It's a lot like an H and K, so I can just hit it and it will pop forward, chamber around, and then watch how this thing shoots. It's really, really smooth. You know, it, it's the recoil impulse is lighter than an AR-15. It's, it's straight back into the shoulder and holding the gun on target is very, very easy to do. Now, sometimes having more weight out front does help stabilize for those longer shots, but for CQB moving in and out of vehicles, moving through your house, things like that, you're gonna find this short Micron package pretty darn cool. The only thing I would say is be very, very careful about your hand, especially if you're not running a suppressor, because you don't want to get it out in front of the muzzle. So, so far, and we've put probably about 400, 500 rounds through it so far, because I've had it for a little while, and I've had zero malfunctions with it. I only lubed it when I first got it, and uh, haven't lubed it since or cleaned it, and it's continued to function just fine. One of the things I get asked all the time is, Mac, how can I get involved in the firearms industry? Well, one of the best ways to do that is to consider going to Modern Gun School. It's an accredited school, and they offer all the modern classes that will get you up to speed and be able to empower you to go out and find a job in the gun industry. You can learn gunsmithing and things like that, and you learn from home. So please check them out. I have a URL down in the video description below. Let's take the Micron apart and take a look at the inside, because I really want to show you the bolt difference. I've already talked about the polymers being different, things like that, the improved gas system. You just have these captive pins that you can use the tip of a bullet to take off. You want to take this off because this will prevent this from swinging open, uh, clamshelling much like an AR-15 would. There's three pins that hold the uppers and lowers together. Uh, the two rear pins you need to take out to access the internals. The third pin you can take out if you want to separate the two, uh, the upper from the lower. These pins usually just take the tip of a bullet to get them started. They are captive, so they won't come all the way out, so you won't lose them in the field. And then once you've had those pins pulled out, now the gun hinges open. Now, one thing I want to point out about the MDR and the MDRX is the trigger system. A lot of people falsely believe that all bullpups have really bad triggers. I hear that in, you know, said to me all the time at the shop, and I see it in the comments section all the time. How's the trigger on that bullpup? Bullpup tr triggers stu uh, suck. They're, they're horrible. That's not true. People are going back to 1977 and the Styrog. The Styrog had two aluminum bars that would push back into the trigger mechanism, which then had a bunch of plastic components that were just gritty and rubbed together, and it just made for a horrible trigger. So the Styrog gave bullpups a bad name for triggers. Modern bullpups like this, they don't push, they pull the trigger. And so if you look right here by the hammer, this is the trigger bar connected to the sear. So I put the weapon on fire, and when I pull the trigger, you'll watch this bar move. So I, I take up just a little bit of slack, I hit a shelf, and if I push past that shelf at all, it's a single stage trigger, watch this bar move. And it releases the, the hammer. So this thing has a trigger that's every bit as good as a decent aftermarket trigger for an AR-15. So that makes this gun very, very shootable for those people that prefer a more match type trigger. Now, I use military triggers all the time and I don't have a problem with them, but this definitely has a good trigger in it. So now I'm gonna take the bolt and carrier out. I'm just gonna use the charging handle to do that and it'll slide right out the rear. This is the bolt out of the original MDR and this is the MDX. Now, if you look at the face of the bolts, you're gonna see they're completely different. And this is where they've they've changed the bolt. The the bolt on the MDRX has a plunger ejector 
and has a more AR-15-ish looking bolt face. On the original MDR, you have the extractor up here and you have it open on both sides because you can easily switch this gun, the original MDR, to left or right hand ejection simply by prying off the port covers and swapping it out. Cool feature, but is it really that necessary? No, by going to this system, it lowered the cost of the gun, even with the new polymers and things like that. The cost of the MDRX is less than the original MDR and it has more improvements. And I do think the side ejection is an improvement. This is a port cover off of the 5.56 rifle for the forward eject. So what would happen is the bolt would come back, a little scissoring action would push the spent case over so it would engage with this little trough here. And then when the bolt goes forward, it would just simply push it right out the front and that's where you get your forward ejection. This can't be inexpensive to manufacture. It adds additional complexity that doesn't need to be there. So this side ejection system, I think, is a major improvement to the gun. And it was a suggestion I made years ago when I saw the original, um, the original prototypes. So with all that being said, the gun really is easy to maintain. You have a nice big bolt, easy parts to, to um, you know, work with. It's a very simple gun to maintain. And I think once we get even more rounds through it, we're gonna shoot it a lot this summer as more and more ammo hopefully becomes available. I know it seems like a pipe dream, but I'm gonna see if I can run this thing to failure. And if it fails me, if I can catch a, a malfunction, hopefully I'll have a camera running and I'll show it to you guys. But so far, smooth sailing and I'm thoroughly impressed with Micron. So this is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. This is a gun that when I go hunting, I typically take this rifle with me. When we travel out of state, we go out to shoot all sorts of animals from the size of a nail guy down to a pig. This is the gun I reach for. This is my first generation uh, MDR. It's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and it is perfectly accurate. 6.5 Creedmoor is an amazing caliber for hunting and extended range shooting. And this gun I am madly in love with. This is one gun I just don't wanna tamper with. The newest thing that they've added to the MDR, MDX, MDRX lineup is this handguard. It's called the Mantis handguard. It is with its bipod integrated, which it is an integrated bipod system where you can just flip the legs down. Make sure I'm pulling on the right tab. You can just flip the legs down. It is an integrated bipod system. So if you were to take the original polymer handguard, put a Harris bipod on it, this is gonna be like two and a half ounces lighter than a polymer handguard with a separate bipod. So it's, it makes the gun lighter. The bipod folds up into the handguards until you need them. And you also have M-lock compatibility on the side so you can add accessories. Of course, additional rail space out here in front. So it is aluminum. It's gonna be a little bit more durable than polymer. When you lock the legs out in the extended position, all it takes is just pushing down on them. There's kind of like a detent that holds them in place. They're not gonna flop down. But once you got the legs out, they're locked into place. There's a locking tab right here by my index finger. You push in on that locking tab and that will allow you to fold the bipod leg back up into its recessed position. And when these bipod legs are folded up, they integrate so smoothly, you don't even know they're there. So you can use it as a standard rifle if you wanna prone out and take a shot while you're in the field, prairie dog hunting, predator hunting, deer hunting, whatever. It's easy enough to do. It also gives you access to the gas system, which was a complaint of the first generation guns. You have these big openings on both sides, which will easily allow you to access that gas system with the tip of a bullet and make adjustments to it. The bipod legs themselves, there's these little sliders. You push in and I'd say what, you know, half inch increments, it'll come out. So it'll extend all the way, I believe, to nine inches. You have these really nice metal feet I'm guessing aluminum. So when you put the gun on, like even this wood, I can press into it. See how the, the legs are loading up? I can press into it because those, those feet bite in. Not only that, there's a little uh, a wheel here right by my index finger. And you can loosen or tighten this wheel. If I loosen the wheel, notice the gun can adjust for cant for uneven ground. And then when you tighten it back up, you can tighten it up to where it makes it very difficult to rotate, but you can still rotate it, but it's not gonna rotate on its own. So you can adjust it for cant, all that good stuff. And again, fold those bipod legs away. 
very easily into the hand guard once you, uh, it's a lot easier doing it this way, once you fold them away. So the Manta system, uh, I want to say on their website is $4.99, so it's not an inexpensive upgrade, but if you use the rifle like I do for hunting, that's pretty darn cool. I really like it because I've tried to put a bipod on this and I ultimately took it off. So I'd always shoot off rests like fallen trees and rocks and things like that. Now I have a bipod option that's integrated into the gun. I think it looks smart and it certainly is, is a, uh, a, a well-designed piece of kit. So if you use your rifle for hunting, you might want to check out this Mantis. And this is the third part, uh, the third component or the third product I wanted to show you guys in today's video. I'm really impressed with this Mantis system. So on the Desert Tech website, they made an interesting comparison that I want to show you guys here. They have a comparison between the uh, Micron and the P90, and the P90 is a very popular submachine gun. Now this one is an SBR of a PS90, but it's the exact same size as a P90. So the MDRX Micron is just a couple inches longer, and it, however, fires the 556 by 45 while the P90 fires the 5.7 by 28. So the ballistic advantage definitely goes to the Micron. The Micron, the fact that it's only a couple inches longer, uh, really is negligible in terms of concealability and handiness for using something like a PDW. Remember when I was talking about this very close arrangement of having the support hand next to the firing hand being similar to the uh, P90? Of course, here we have the P90, which has this exaggerated grip, but your hand, again, very close to the end of the barrel. You can put your thumb through here, but I don't but you can see it has that very similar arrangement. And the other thing I've noticed is that my P90 has a more abrupt recoil impulse than the Micron. The Micron is actually more controllable. This has a fairly violent operation. That bolt slams to the rear and goes forward with, with quite a bit of force, and it disrupts the sight picture and thus makes it harder for this follow-up shot. Micron is actually smoother and lighter recoiling, surprisingly. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at some of the new products from Desert Tech. I've been pretty impressed with the stuff that I've seen. I really like the handguard here, the Mantis, for my hunting rifle, so it's going to stay on the gun. So in future hunting videos and things like that, or when we're out traveling around doing hunting and Instagram or pictures and stuff like that, you're definitely going to see this on the gun. I like it. It makes sense, and it solved a problem that I had with putting you know, a Harris bipod or an Atlas or something underneath it. It just made the gun unwieldy. This does not. The Micron. At first, I really didn't think much of it, but then when I got my hands on one, started shooting it, I actually fell in love with it, and I also like the updates to the MDRX versus the regular MDR. Now, if you're interested in the Micron kit, it's a 5.56 conversion kit. I believe it sells over on the Desert Tech website for $589, and then you can slap it into your MDR or MDRX and make your own Micron, but of course, first of all, you have to pay Uncle Sam his 200 bucks and wait for your Form 1 to come back, which is only taking about 30 days max right now, so it's a fairly quick process. So, guys, if you enjoy our content and you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There's a link down below. You'll get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. We've built a great community over there. You get early access to videos like this and all sorts of other perks. Again, there's a link down below. Also, right here on YouTube, there's a a little join button right underneath the video player. Give that join button a click and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. And now I'm going to shoot my baby off the bipod. Uh, this is just a standard SR25 magazine for 308. Hold 6.5 Creedmoor. Again, our friends over at Federal. This is a 140 grain match. Magazine disappears into the gun. Kind of like that because it's such a small, handy package again, for that whole hunting thing. And we will talk to you guys soon.